Hi everyone, welcome back to a new video. Last year I met with Brandon Walsh of Star Mount Systems where we installed a flat mount onto my Jeep. Fast forward a year and Star Mount Systems came out with a brand new all-in-one mount uh, version number two. And Brandon invited me back to Star Mount System headquarters in San Diego where we're going to take the original uh, dish from my uh, Jeep and install it in the new all-in-one mount. Brandon is also is going to cut apart a, a new dish and show you all the steps required to cut apart the dish and install it into a flat mount should you decide to do it for yourself. So stick around and see the new setup in action. We're back in the shop with uh, Brandon. We're going to cut apart our dish and uh, we'll show you how to get the uh, dish back into the uh, uh, new mount here. So Brandon's going to take us through the steps that's uh, required. We're going to mark the dish and uh, get this thing installed. Yeah, so because Stan's dish has already been cut uh, about a year ago, I'll uh, ready to use another dish here from a customer to show you the whole process of how we cut it and what was involved in doing that. Um, and obviously in the end here, we're going to put Stan's uh, dish in the 12 volt in the case that we're putting it in. Um, but for uh, demonstration, we'll be using a customer's uh, um, dish right now to cut it. All right, so uh, let's get to it. Okay, so let me show you guys uh, what we're doing. What we've had here, or what I had in the past, is I had my old dish, which was here in my original Starlink uh, mount. So I had two separate units, and then I built, as you can see in one of my older videos, a separate 12 volt system that I had built with uh, all separate components. So here's my router, step up converter, and a step down converter, PoE, which is the power over internet, and then my cable adapter here. So all of this is now going to be installed inside the new Starlink. So we're going to get rid of all of this and install that into Starlink's new mount. All right guys, so here is Stan's original mount that we did for him about a year ago. Um, back then he ordered the standard uh, flat mount that we, we, we provide. Um, now as you can see, his, his mount uses the standard Starlink connector still, um, which a lot of you guys have. Um, and some of you may have experienced that your Starlink cable has gone bad over time. Um, that's just because the pins inside these connectors just aren't very good. Um, with that said, we do have a new RJ45 version of this mount um, available that eliminates this port and puts a waterproof RJ45 uh, in, in its place on the outside. So that's nice. But today, we're not upgrading him to the RJ45 version. We're actually upgrading him to our, our 12 volt system. Not only is it the 12 volt system, but he's going to be getting version 2, which just started going out about a week ago. Um, so let's dig into that and see what this is about. So when you get your kit in the mail, you're going to get everything with the lid on it. There'll be six bolts holding this lid down while it's in the mail. Take those bolts off and you'll see some bubble wrap in here. Go ahead and take that out. And then you got your whole system and inside you will receive a little baggie right here. Uh, this baggie has everything you need to do your modification from the pen, the template, uh, what we use to get the line marked on your dish, the extra bolts that need, and with this, this is our pin layout card. So um, this is a very um, special pin layout that you need for your uh, shielded RJ45 connector that's, that's right here. And that's what's going to plug into your PoE. So it's very important that you use this pin layout. Otherwise, you will have some issues with your system. So um, and the other cool thing is, is on the, the front side of the bag with this QR code. So all you got to do is just scan it with your phone or your camera. It will bring up your entire um, instructions you need to follow step by step. It's about 80 different photos um, to walk you through the entire process of how to cut your dish down. Um, so all you're going to need is a Dremel tool in this baggie and you're good to go. So, so let's look at what's new here. So like we saw on Stan's uh, setup he created, this is your step up. So Starlink has to run on 48 volts. Um, now in your car, you have a 12 volt battery. Some people have 24 volt 
systems, but generally known as a 48 volt system. So we have to get the power to power the Starlink up to 48 volts. So what this guy does right here is 12 volts go in and then 48 volts go out. So we used to have the same exact style um, step up on our version one, which was run on the outside of the case on your power wire. Uh, what's different between version one and version two for us is that we have eliminated that style and we have a new style step up, which does the same thing, but it is inside of the case now. So as you can see, 12 volts come in here, 48 volts go out. And that's this PoE, that's what's gonna um, power your Starlink up. And as you can see, we have our step down right here. So this is taking 12 volts in and then bringing it back down to five so that we can um, power our, our router, which actually is the same router that Stan was using. The only difference is we had to uh, kind of gut it out and get the parts that we need out of it uh, and make it a little more low profile to fit inside this case. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna cut a dish and show you exactly how to cut it down safely mark it and get everything ready to put in any of our, any of our flat mounts because this, the cutting for, for the 12 volt is the same cutting for every other mount that we do. All right, so obviously Stan's dish is already cut. So we have a lot of dishes here that customers um, send in for us to do modification for them. We'll be using one of theirs for this video. Um, so we're gonna dig in and kind of walk you guys through um, how you should do this. So back to your bag, we're gonna open this up. Let's just empty out some of this stuff here. Uh, what you want to grab out first is your template, uh, the electrical tape, uh, and your pen. And the rest of it can stay in the bag for now. Now just go ahead and take the uh, wrapping off the tape. And uh, what we're going to do here, it's pretty simple. You're going to lay your tape flat. Make sure it's a nice flat surface for this. You need to take your pen, and all we're going to do is just use the height of the electrical tape. And the reason we do that is because this is a dome style um, unit. So we can't just be like, you know, do half inch here, because but when you get in the corners, that's not going to be very effective. So go ahead and do the other side too. around here. Same thing, just gonna hold it up and you'll kind of see there'll be a little bit of a curve and that's what you want. Okay. And then one more. Okay, so the best thing is what I do, I just go in here Fill that line in. Fill that line in. Just like that. All right, so next we got our template. So what we're gonna do here and this is the one, this is one difference from the, the version one. Version one, we only had to do, just gonna line this guy up right underneath the dish. Fold this guy up. I'm just gonna do a little U shape here. That's it. And then version two, actually we gotta do this a second time. We gotta do it on the other side as well, so. That there. Fold it up. There you go. So you got your two, you got your two U shapes um, now done, and you got the entire dish marked the way it needs to go. Can put this away. Tape away. Now comes for the fun part. Now we get to cut this thing. All right, so it's very important um, that you use a Dremel tool for this. I know a lot of people have tried exploring with table saws and 
cut off grinders and stuff like that, um, where that might be that might be something that will work in theory. What, what worries us is that when you're using tools like that, you're flinging a lot of stuff in at the board, um, which could damage your board uh, possibly. So the cool thing about a Dremel tool with a router bit is that you're going side to side and you're not really flinging uh, material in at the board because we want to protect your board as much as possible during this process. So as you can see, we got a brand new blade on here. Um, and this is what we use and highly suggest it. This is the 4300 uh, Dremel. I uh, can get it at Home Depot and Lowe's, pretty much anywhere. Um, and as you can see, we set it to about a quarter inch. There's, there is um, markings on most of these, but you want just, as you can see, let me put my hand there, just a little bit, just a little bit. You don't want to go too far. This, this plastic isn't that thick, so you don't need a whole lot. Um, and I would rather people have to go back and cut a little bit more because they didn't go deep enough, then go too deep and go into their board. So, so. safety first. Let's get the Dremel going here. And for us, we have it pretty high. We're in between about 30 and 25 on, on this particular router, or um, on this particular Dremel. Um, so it works pretty well at about, about in between 25 and 30, so. That's ready to go. All right, so as you can see, cut all the way around. Um, now before we cut these two U-shapes out, I like, to, I like to pop the top off and get, so we can see what we're doing a little better. So get my screwdriver here. Easy thing to do is just kind of carefully just go in there and pop it up. And then you'll see here, you got two wires connected, right? So this is actually the one, this is the connector that controls the motors that we're obviously no longer gonna be using. Unplug that guy. And this is the one that is controlling your whole board. We will be reusing this wire here, so carefully get this thing out. All right, so you got that undone. Put this to the side here. And now we got your exposed dish, right? Now, uh, we will clean some of this up, but before we do that, we're gonna go ahead and cut this. So, uh, good technique for this, because this is the closest you're gonna get to your circuit board, is right here. Um, what I like to do is cut about all the way down here and here on both sides and then I kind of just, I don't go all the way through on, on the, the bottom part and then I just kind of break it off with our fingers and I'll show you that in a second here. So. So as you can see, I just went right all the way through, about right where, the, right where the bend happens at the bottom. And we're just gonna go, not all the way through here, we're just gonna go just a little bit and then we're gonna bend it, bend it with our finger. So just like that. Um, and then all you have to do is you can just break that off, just like that. Um, and that just, just because it is pretty close here with your Dremel, I just don't want anyone hitting their board. So, uh, and if you feel comfortable after, you're more than welcome to go back and clean it up a little bit, but you'll be able to see a lot better. There you go. Now we'll do the other side and we'll keep, we'll keep going. Looks 
So as you can see, we got everything cut all the way around. We got our two U-shapes cut out. Um, now we're gonna go blow this thing out with the air compressor and get all these uh, plastic pieces out of here. As much out as I can in the trash can here. And then, there we go. There we go. All right, so this is a newer Starlink. So previous um, Starlinks, this part that we're about to pop off here, it was actually gray. So don't get confused. It's the same exact thing. They just, instead of making it out of uh, gray plastic, it's now white. So, so as soon as we got the dish cut and cleaned off and ready to go, we're still not done yet. We got to get this piece off. So what I do, I take my, my screwdriver here, pop it in there. Break that off. And there's that. Now that we got this back plate off here, uh, we don't need this wire. This wire is gonna be thrown in the trash, uh, but we do need this guy right here. So it's still stuck in here, um, and it's actually what's inside your pole. So this is probably the trickiest mm -hmm. part for people. Um, so get your screwdriver out. What you're gonna wanna do is put the screwdriver right next to the small square. And while you push in, you're gonna kinda use this button too. And then just like that, and then what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to push this up, just like that. And then, there it is. So now you got the wire hanging out here. The next easiest thing to do is carefully take your same screwdriver. You're gonna stick it underneath. And that's it. And then you'll just pull this wire straight out of here. And there it is. And then, this is my favorite part, stick that back in there and put it in the graveyard. This is about, this was, this is about one week's worth of modifications done at this shop right here. Um, and they all go in the trash. So if anyone needs any uh, motors or poles or anything, you let us know because uh, these are all going right in the trash otherwise. Right, for any of you RVers that are out there that run over your poles <laughs> or your stands that are right there in the corner, you give Brandon a call. Yeah, we have um, hundreds of these uh, stands sitting here, so um, if uh, anyone needs one, please let us know. All right, so back here we got our dish. We got the wire that we extracted from the pole. Um, now, this wire is already pre-made for us, that it's in our kit, but your kit will come with a shielded RJ45 connector. Um, so we're actually, I'm gonna run through um, how to do one of these um, with you um, because they are very tricky and I have a lot of buddies that um, are really good at doing these, right? And they laugh at me when I started doing them, like, why is this, dude, it's not that hard. Well, I'll tell you what, anyone who's ever done one of these for the first time knows that these are not the easiest thing to do. Uh, and they're not that fun to do. So I'm gonna show you a trick that I use here when doing them that's a lot easier than trying to line all eight at the same time and push them through. So here we are. So this is the original, this is the wire that we just extracted from the customer's um, Starlink. Now in the instructions, I'll teach you how to take all these, these uh, three pieces off that you don't need on it anymore. So for the sake of the video, we already have one here that those pieces have been removed. And here it is. So this is just the wire. Uh, Starlink land, and then the and that goes in your board. Now we're gonna do um, is we're gonna take this and we're gonna cut it about right about there, about two inches in. Cut this off. You can keep it. You can throw it away. Again, we also have hundreds of these. If anyone needs any of these, give us a call. We don't know what to do with them. So, all right. Now what you're gonna do is go about two more inches down. And you're just gonna kinda, you need to strip this wire back a little bit here. There you go. I'm gonna pull this guy off. There's a piece of plastic sometimes that's in there, it actually pulled off with it. And now you got your eight wires and and uh, the, the ground wire here. Okay, so 
This is where your pin layout card comes into play. It is very important that when we terminate this uh, shielded RJ45 connector here, that we follow this pin layout right here. So I'm gonna walk through how to do it. And again, if you've never done one of these, they're not that fun and they're not that easy. Um, like I said, I have a lot of buddies, uh, Stan being one of them that's done hundreds of these, uh, and he's, he probably could do this in about 30 seconds, and he'll laugh at most of us, but most of us have not done this enough to be that good at them. So I'm gonna show you how we do it, and we teach people who've never done it. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna unravel each one of these wires. And as you do it, just kind of straighten them out, right? Keep going. Okay, one more group here. All right, so now you got them all separated, right? And straightened out a little bit. Let's go to your pin layout. So, now what usually a professional that does this all the time, they're really good at this. They can get all these lined up right in the order they need to be in kind of cut them at an angle and push it through here at one time. I will tell you that if you do that, and you may get lucky and it may go in, but one of these crosses up, you're gonna to have to do it again and you can sit here for a long time. So I'm gonna show you a, a trick that, um, that we use. So what I do, I, because we cut them a little bit longer, believe it or not, we are able to go in and push each one in the order that it needs to be individually. I know this isn't exactly how um, most would do it, but this is a much easier way for someone that has n does not do them very often or is struggling with the, uh, the, uh, the way that most do it. Sometimes you gotta cut the end off a little bit to make it a little smoother. And you just follow this pin layout card so you can see I'm going White, orange, orange, blue, white, green, green. And then we got the white, blue. And then we got the white, brown. And then we got the brown. Now, there you go. That was pretty quick, right? Uh, and if you think you can line them all up and push them on at one time, you're more welcome to try that too. I don't have the best luck with that and I get a lot of phone calls every day about people struggling with that. So uh, that, that technique right there might be the, uh, the best way to do it if you're struggling. So now you kind of, what you want to do is push this guy in so that the, uh, the jacket here is inside the, uh, the uh, connector. And just double check, you know, just go through and make sure you got all your pins in the right order. Um, and what I do, I, I cut about right there, right? And then I got to get my uh, crimp tool. Now this is the crimp tool we use. It's from, from Platinum Tools. Uh, uh, there's many different styles out there. This is the one that we use. Um, now once you got that in there and you got your, your wires in the right order, what you're going to do is simply stick this guy into your crimp tool all the way in all the way down. I do it about two or three times just to make sure. And there you go. Now, sometimes our, our crimp tool, our, our blade's getting a little, uh, our blade's getting a little dull. So just to cut off some of these, what I do sometimes, I just go here. And I just cut these guys off. Just to get those off. All right, so now that you got that, um, you can go ahead and just cut the rest of this guy off right here. And that's all you got to do. That's probably the hardest part of this entire thing is, is this guy right here. So hopefully that technique, I know it's a little different than what you see on some of these YouTube videos, but 
Um, it works really well for us. It's worked other, for other customers too. So hopefully that will help you guys uh, get this, this part of it done. So, All right, so now where does this go? So take the lid off the, uh, the 12 volt and everything comes ready to go in this minus the wire that goes from your PoE that will then run through this channel up to here, which is about the area on your board where this will plug into. So what we do here now, we're gonna take our, our newly terminated wire here, we're gonna plug it into the PoE, make sure you hear it snap in there nice. Inside your bag, you'll have two zip ties in here. You're gonna take the first one, Zip tie it in there. Make sure that the connector's in there nice. Go ahead and get your wire cutters and cut that off. And then we're gonna route this guy right up here. So it's sitting about right there. Take your second zip tie. Stick it in there. Cinch it down. Cut the excess off and you're good to go. So, now you officially have a complete 12 volt system ready to go. Um, again, the reason you guys got to do this is because this is actually in your Starlink right now. And so you'll have to take that out and do this. But now this thing's ready to go. So now we are going to go ahead and take Stan's original flat mount apart because this one right here is a customer's. So we're not going to put that in Stan's. Um, we're going to get Stan's out. We're going to stick it in here. We're going to boot it up and we're gonna show you how to get this thing started. All right, let's take his original Starlink apart here. Pop it off. Looks like the glue, looks like the glue on that connector is still good because there we go. Pop that off. Look at that. Nice and clean. Right. No moisture at all, which is awesome. And, uh, and I've had that uh, for about a year and a half or so. so. Yeah, it's been, I was going to say, it's, uh, as you can tell, um, you have less bolts on the side of yours. Uh, if you compare it to this one right here, uh, We've added, we added uh, another set of holes for bolts up and down here. Um, so that just shows you how old the one that you have is, um, which is awesome because it still works and no, no problems at all, which is awesome. So. And I've had that on my hood of the Jeep for over a year and probably 70,000 miles or so. I shouldn't have not 70, in a year, probably about 40,000 miles or so. It's pretty good. And all over the country and all kinds of terrain. So that shows how well these things stand up. Yep. All right, so now that we got Stan's uh, dish out of his original flat mount, uh, we got his 12 volt setup and ready to go. Um, now this is the fun part. I'm gonna take his dish here. I usually lay him in right like that. Then you get your plug ready. And as you go down, you're gonna go ahead and just Plug that guy in, right there. Bring it on down. There it is. And that's it. One of the differences between Stan's original mount and this one is that A, his had about 20, I think it was 22 bolts, now we have 26. Um, and these are black. Uh, it does not mean they're not stainless because they are still stainless. We have them coated also on top black, because we think the black looks really cool. Uh, we do have a lot of uh, customers that are concerned that they're not stainless. I can promise you that they are. Uh, they're just coated black uh, on top of the stainless. So they're still stainless, they just look really cool black. So that's why we do that. All right, now that we got Stan's um, 12 volt, all the 26 bolts down, O-ring looks nice all the way around. Uh, make sure you double check, make sure you got a flat spot all the way around and you're not too compressed also. Um, again, being too compressed is, is just as bad as 
being uh, not compressed at all. All right, so when you get your kit, you're, this is gonna be the power cable that it comes with. It's in this bag. What's in this bag is a 10 foot length of SAE cable. You got a cigarette lighter adapter and also one for your battery. Uh, most people are just hooking this to their battery, uh, hooking this to the 10 foot cable, and then 10 foot cable into the uh, star mount itself. Uh, now, SAE cables are tricky, so like you don't wanna just put the cigarette lighter straight into this and I'll tell you why. If you look at SAE cables, uh, they're sometimes a reverse polarity depending on the end that you have. What's important for this application is that the red end with the exposed metal end is always what goes into this mount, not the black end. It's always gotta be the red end, okay? So for the sake of testing today, we are, because we're not at a car, uh, this is a battery, uh, battery box. It pumps out 12 volts. Um, you just turn it on uh, and you'll be able to, you can plug AC or DC. For, for the sake of this test, we are going to plug in the cigarette lighter. So we're just gonna plug the cigarette lighter adapter to the end of the cable. We'll plug it in in the back here, 12 volts, turn it on. Uh, and then we're gonna plug our power cable, red exposed end in to the dish. As you can see, it immediately went, uh, the power jumped up to four or five. That's the, the router and stuff turning on. Uh, now it's starting to hit the Starlink. Uh, it'll sit around eight to 11 for a couple seconds and then uh, you'll know that your system works and the Starlink is booting up when you see this number spike up, you know, into the teens and all the way up to uh, uh, the, the high 60s and sometimes 70. Um, <clears throat> now that, that, that spike at the beginning when you get it in the 50s and 60s and 70s it's just the booting process i would say that when we have these things tested outside as you can see it's spiking up um, when you see um, after it mellows out and it, it's, it's done searching for satellites and it's online it sits in between you know 28 to 40 ish um, which is pretty good but as you can see right now it is in it is in 100 boot mode it's pretty high um, so it's gonna, because we're indoors, it's gonna stay pretty, pretty pegged up there in the high 60s uh, because it won't be able to see any satellites inside this building. Um, but uh, we're gonna go take this thing outside and let it sit out there and uh, get, it to get some satellites and then we'll, uh, we'll show you the results. Now, the cool thing about this is, uh, even though we're not using the Starlink router anymore, um, we still have the ability to use the Starlink app. So with the, the kit you have, this is the box. And a lot of people wonder, um, why did you send me a router box that when you open it up, it's an empty router? I kid you not, I've had a, a, many emails and phone calls of people asking if they could get um, a, a partial refund because the, uh, the router that I sent them has nothing inside of it. Well. We just took everything out of this router and stuck it inside the case. Now, the reason we give this to you is because on the back here, it's gonna say your SSID, which is your network name, your Wi-Fi name now, and underneath that is the key. The key is the password, right? So in this case, this SSID or network name is GLSFT1200, and the last three digits are 53E. So now this thing's been booting up. Let's go ahead and Get on my phone here, and we're gonna go to Wi-Fi's. And there it is, so that's the, there it is right there. This is the GL SFT1200-53E. Now, you're gonna to go to attach to it. The password or the key is good life. So, and if you have any of the white ones, it's always gonna be good life, but check it anyways. I'm just gonna type in the word good life, join, and then we're connected to the network. So um, many people end up looking for their original Starlink router name that they had originally. Because we're not using that Starlink router anymore, you will no longer see that pop up. It will be this. Uh, you can change this uh, name and password anything you would like. Uh, but for the sake of this video, we're going to just keep it the same. Now, what's cool about this is after you log into it, you just go right on over to your Starlink app. 
And as long as you're connected to the Wi-Fi, the Starlink app still works. So obviously we're still booting here. You can see that stands, um, Starlink is booting. Uh, it, it's gonna stay booting until we go outside because it can't find, any, can't find the sky. So as you can see, many of you are may used to seeing the little router um, image right here. The reason it's no longer there is because the Starlink has uh, acknowledged that that router is not there anymore. So all you're gonna see is just a dish. Um, once we go outside here, and it um, finds some satellites, you'll actually notice that the, the angle dish actually goes flat because the uh, Starlink knows that it's actually flat, which is kind of cool. Um, now, the only thing you can't do on the app that you could do before is click on the network button, and that was where you would change your, your network um, name and password. Uh, you have to do that a little bit differently now. We can go over that. But other than that, this entire app um, is still just as functional as it was before. You don't have to go into router bypass mode. You don't have to tell the Starlink app anything. It automatically does it for you. So that's pretty cool. So we're gonna go take this thing outside for a couple minutes and find some satellites and we'll come right back. All right, as you can see, uh, the wattage the just dropped down a little bit here. Uh, it's because we ended up putting, uh, bringing it outside and sticking it probably back on its uh, future home again, right on the hood. Um, so we've, we have connected to the sky. Now, as you can see, it does say offline. Um, there's nothing wrong here. It's just that his account has been uh, paused with the Rome plan. You can pause your service. Last month, uh, Stan paused his service. So good news is the only way for us to get that message is that it actually is connected to the sky. Uh, it is offline because until he reactivates his plan, they will not push internet to him. But we can see that everything's working. The watts are where we need it to be. The, 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 the mount is working, the Starlink is working, everything inside is working. Uh, he just needs to reactivate his account. So um, if you do see that you've done the modification uh, and on your, uh, on your, your Wi-Fi thing, it does say, sometimes it will say no internet connection, right? Um, it doesn't mean that you did something wrong. It could just mean that you forgot that you paused your service. Because uh, you will not get internet if it's paused. So all you have to do, he would all would do is click here, reactivate account, activate it, and you're good to go. And the key thing to point out here, I'll go to the battery here, is that it's only I don't know if you can tell or if it's in focus here, but it's only pulling 38 watts of power. So it is a significant power savings from going to the all-in-one unit. And as you can see right here, even though it's offline, um, it is downloading an update. So where he doesn't have any usable internet to go search the web or social media or YouTube or anything like that, the, the, the dish itself is connected to the system in the sky. So it actually is downloading a, a, uh, an update for him right now. Uh, so that's good. That's another indication that everything's working well it's communicating with the sky and the satellites and all that so all right Should sounds be good, good. Should so be good man thanks a lot brandon so again if uh, anyone's interested in doing the modification contact where where brandon where and where, 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 where do we get a hold of you uh star dash mount systems.com um if you want, you can send us an email. The emails get pretty backed up once in a while. Uh, be more than welcome to call me. My number is on the website. I try and answer or call everyone back um, as quickly as I can. Um, we'll get you dialed in. Like I said, every, we have so many different kind of mounts now. Everyone has so many different applications from Jeeps to RVs, van life, boats, race cars, you name it, um, that everyone kind of has their own setup. So I can kind of help you figure out what I think is going to be best for you. Um, uh, and what you're going to do with it. Um, so just give me a call, send us an email, order online, and we'll get everything out to you as quickly as possible. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay. So one thing that's different about our all-in-one compared to uh, a couple of other ones that are out there is that it's very DIY, right? So where you just watch me cut the dish open, you can do that yourself. Um, aside from that, all the parts in here, we've constructed them to be very plug and play, right? Everything can come undone. Um, if for some reason one of your parts fail, 
uh, because of an install issue or, or whatever the case may be, every single thing in here is something we can actually send to the customer um, and they could essentially replace that bad part themselves, right? Um, so it's very, it can be very uh, customer friendly in, in, in servicing your stuff. Um, so if you come over here, I mean, this is a prime example. We got, you know, mountains of parts over here, um, all of which we could be, you know, Stan goes, hey man, I think my step up's bad. Uh, Stan doesn't have to come drive across the country to drop his thing off or ship it. We can diagnose, hey, I think it's your step up. We'll send this in the mail uh, and we'll show them how to, how to install it. And, and, that, and that goes for everything. Right, and nothing's permanently soldered in or anything, no, there's, so there's, I can just swap it out in the field if I had to. Exactly. Or, you know, even foreign countries or something. So. Exactly, so um, some of the other kits involve soldering and it's, really, it's a really cool idea, um, but it's not as um, customer friendly when something may go wrong. Uh, that, that unit will have to be sent back to that company um, where all of our stuff is all stuff that we can send you parts. Um, if you are really remote and you cannot ship it out or whatever the case may be, we can get you the parts you need to get your, your uh, unit up back and running, so. All right, so now you got your 12 volt, you ask yourself, how am I gonna mount this thing, right? We saw Stan's been using suction cups on his hood um, and we got a couple other options that are pretty popular. So um, this is, um, this is one with nothing on it, right? No suction cups, no magnets, anything. So if you can find a way to utilize these four corner holes, um, so out of the 26 bolts that hold this lid down, the four corner ones actually go all the way through to the bottoms uh, and they're drilled out quarter 20 threads. If you can find a way to utilize that um, and use a longer bolt and bolt it to something uh, on your vehicle already, that works great. Some people uh, don't have uh, the ability to do that. so. A lot of people end up using the magnets. This, this unit has magnets on it. In the magnets, you just take a, a bolt, screw the magnet through the magnet into the bottom, you're good to go. Put up on your hood, your roof, whatnot. Um, and then, this is very popular. Uh, and we highly suggest getting a slide mount. Um, this is our quick release slide mount. So this is the 12 volt, and you'll see this is our quick release. So this is actually two pieces. And I will show you how this works. What you're gonna do is this, this bottom base plate right here can be bolted to your car, uh, your vehicle, whatnot. Um, so what a lot of uh, RV guys are doing actually, they don't wanna drill any holes in their roof of their RV. And I totally understand that, no one wants to drill holes anywhere. They're actually using uh, die core adhesive stuff and uh, pretty much adhesing this bottom base plate down to their vehicle and then because this is two pieces, you just take your tool out. You got two small little bolts. There's one here and one here. Just those two right there. And then this guy will pop right out. So as you can see, you got the second piece of the quick release is bolted to your flat mount or your 12 volt. And this is your base plate. So if you were to find a way to uh, bolt down, adhesive, glue, whatever you want, this base plate to your vehicle or your application, this will always stay on there. And then you can just take this, it pops in those two ears right there, boom, these two bolts go back right in the front here, and you're good to go. So that's a very, very popular um, uh, setup. A lot of people like this because they can buy an extra base plate from us, and let's say, have it on your Jeep, and let's say he's got a boat too, he could have a base plate on his boat, base plate on his Jeep. You're never gonna be on your Jeep and your boat at the same time. So you can just take it from your Jeep, pull it off, walk over your boat, pop it in, you're good to go. Good idea, so, or a vacation property. Vacation or... property or anything, right? Um, so being an off-road guy that I am, um, we use these a lot on our pre-run cars. So we have like a race car and then a pre-runner. So the pre-runner is the one you go practice the course with and stuff like that. We don't need a Starlink on both of them. It's just kind of a waste. So we'll have a base plate on our pre-runner. We use it during pre-running, take our notes, all that good stuff. When it comes race day, we pop it off the pre-runner, pop on the race car. Uh, one account, one Starlink, one case, two base plates, and you're good to go. So those are three pretty popular um, uh, setups between the suction cups and magnets and the uh, quick release. Um, and then obviously some people uh, fabricate their own their own deal for the bottom using those four corner bolts, but 
uh, those are some pretty popular um, mounting options. All right, so we talked a lot about the 12 volt and the regular flat mount, the RJ45. We also make uh, a mount, quick release for the high performance uh, dish. No modification is needed for this one. It's the $2,500 dish from Starlink. Um, uh, and we actually have one of those on one of our race cars. Um, it is a different color because it's wrapped. And the cool thing about it is, is that you can actually wrap over these things uh, with uh, vinyl material and it does not affect the, the performance of the dish at all. So it kind of blends in with the race car and the colors of the car. But same kind of concept as the quick release. You got your two bolts right here, one here, one here. Pop this thing off, unplug it, move it to another car. You know, being off-road when we want to wash these things and we do prep on them and take them all apart, being able to quickly release this thing and just keep the base plate on the roof is super nice. Um, so we actually do have stuff for the high performance as well. Um, but again, this doesn't involve any modification and there is no 12 volt uh, conversion for this dish. So you'll, you'll, you'll be stuck running 110 style plugs to power this thing with power inverters. So one thing you did just touch on, so when you're not converting uh Starlink dishes, you are a professional race car driver. Yeah, we've been racing since my 18th year, actually. Um, I was doing trucks for a long time, uh, and I moved into the, the golf, we call them golf carts. They're not quite golf carts, but they're pretty much golf carts on steroids. So uh, it's a really fun class. Um, and yeah, so we've been, we've been live streaming um, on this car. Um, I just have two high performance dishes, so we stuck one on here. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, they're all gonna work the same. The downfall to this dish is that it, it does consume a lot of power. Uh, it's two to three times the power consumption. It's a much bigger piece. There's a power supply and a router you have to deal with and a, obviously a bigger power inverter um, that we have to have on the car. So with all that stuff, I mean, that's why the 12 volt's so appealing because you don't have to have all that stuff. You just have wire running up to it and you're good to go. Uh, this, thing, this thing has a lot of baggage, let's put it that way, to make this thing run, so. Okay guys, thanks for watching. Brandon's uh, Star Mount Systems information is in the description below, as well as all my other social links. Consider liking and subscribing to the channel if you enjoyed this content. I'll be introducing some more uh, ham radio content. If you are interested in ham radio, make sure you hit the uh, notification button and you'll be notified anytime I introduce another video. So until next time, we'll see you in the next one.